Right people, today we're talking fuel pump elements. And why are fuel pump elements important? Well... Diesel power. Diesel power is the reason why these elements are important. And without these, we wouldn't be able to get what we need from the pump. Now, I'm going to just quickly explain what we've got here because we've got a bit of a range. Now, these are all for the Bosch M pump, the, um, the mechanical style pump that we use um, for the 606 engines. Now, here we have uh, a Bosch 5.5 out of an NA. Um, we've got a 6mm, that's genuine Bosch again, you can tell by the colour of the casings. Here we have a version 1 uh, diesel mechan. Got the version uh, 3 7.5 diesel mechan. That was a 7.5 as well, but it's version 1. Uh, then we've got my 7.7 um, diesel mechan 8mm. And at the end, we've got the Holy Grail. These are super rare. That's uh, an 8.5 super fluid. Okay, so we can immediately put these into categories and see how they have been, how they have evolved. This is the Bosch 5.5. You can see the um, the the helix shape, the basic shape. We can take this 8 mil diesel mechan. This is the fourth generation, uh, and we can see the similarities. Obviously, it's much larger, but it has its lubrication. Uh, cut in it exactly a scaled up version it has the limiting cut in it which um, is quite unusual uh, we've got the the helix this is what gives you your ability to to increase or decrease the throttle as we rotate the element and then here uh, we have the idle slot uh, sorry the the stop slot not the idle slot um, and then the the other categories uh, this is quite a quite an unusual element you can see it's undergone uh, maybe quite a lot of changes but then we can we can sort of branch these three this is the Bosch 6 mil Goran 7.5 and my 7.7 .7, all again quite a similar design again you can see the Bosch has the lubrication uh, groove in the actual element whereas these two have got the lubrication grooves in the barrel instead Okay, so uh, this one, you can see all the barrels have a very similar design. Um, they have a, a round inlet port. The inlet ports can be raised or adjusted to suit the element and the needs. Uh, it's just like rotating an element by rotating the inlet port. Um, but you can see this, this superfluid is quite special in that it has a large oval inlet port. And this is what gives, uh, I mean, when we compare, we put a diesel mech an 8mm. Uh, next to the super Floyd and just look at this the difference in inlet size you can imagine with the same amount of pressure how much more fuel can flow into this bad boy than this um, it's it's also got quite a nice tapered inlet to it as well it's these are very 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 expensive they're, they're hard to get hold of um, and they're, they're a very very nice piece of kit um, so using this I'm going to explain a little bit how an element works Okay, so if you can imagine, just put that to one side to eliminate confusion. If you can imagine fuel pumps into this uh, large hole uh, at the top. As the element uh, is in this position here, now you've got to bear in mind, as the engine rotates, this pumps up and down. Um, and then you can actually rotate this, uh, the, the governor in the pump, uh, via the throttle and where the governor position is can rotate this. Um, basically, when the the actual plunger itself is aligned with this long slot, the one that I mentioned earlier, which is your stop slot, this one here, this one down lengthways, um, basically it won't pump any fuel at all because that slot uh, basically, will, as, as fuel's trying to enter there, it allows it just to release straight back out because it comes straight back down the slot. Now, as the element is rotated slightly, this allows the port to cut off and actually seal closed. And as it seals closed, it allows a certain amount of fuel to be pushed before the slot then aligns up with the, uh, the actual angular groove. Now, uh, if I find a slightly better place to put my camera so I can explain this. So as this 
as this basically covers up and down, I'll put it in so you can see. You can actually see as I rotate it the actual angle change. So this is the where it would be in the stop position. It wouldn't be capable of pumping any fuel at all because it'd come in and come straight back out. Obviously, it's going to pump fuel out the top. So you can imagine when you apply pressure there, it comes straight back out. Now, as we rotate the element, that then becomes closed. It's fully sealed. So anything that's in that pocket at that time, as that lifts, will be pushed up through the delivery valve and into the injector. Now, as soon as you get that slightest bit, we can actually just see there, then the pressure is released and it will stop pumping fuel. Now, obviously, as you turn this more that way, that will allow more and more before it cuts off. So in this position, for example, we can push the second port closure happens where that port is sealed off. It will be able to push that whole amount up there until that opens. So basically in that position, we can deliver more fuel. Now, as you can see on some elements, like the one that I just described, the diesel Meccan one, which is a bit like the, the standard, this groove here is like a limiter slot, so that basically that can serve two, one or two purposes. That can actually limit the amount of fuel regardless of rack position. So as, you, as we can see, slightly different to look through this hole, but if that slot lines up, which I'm not actually sure if it does, because I've never paid much attention. Oh, it does. You can just see it lines up there. That will release fuel all the way along the top there. So as soon as that gets to the top, and that gives um, a, a relief, as it will. Now, the, the original uh, Mercedes 5.5 has the same. Now, if you look at a turbo version of this, this cut actually comes down deeper. Uh, it doesn't have this kind of like limiter that stops it making uh, more fuel. So, to cut a very long story short, they're the different elements. These are the different ways that they're made, and I've given you a brief explanation on how it works. Um, all you need to decide now is which size you like and what suits your driving style. Oh, there is one other thing that I didn't mention. One other thing that I didn't mention. The, uh, if you also look at the element here on the very top surface, you can see that this cutout here, that cutout is basically to retard the fuel injection timing. As you can imagine, like I described before, port cutoff is what then allows fuel to flow. So if you if you imagine that that, that cutout there is not allowing the port to seal until the plunger's up further, then you can understand that the, the fuel won't be injected till a little bit later. So for low throttle applications, this is really good. Um, it kind of assists what the um, what the uh, the centrifugal timing adjustment device does. As you rot rotate this further, that actually disappears. As you can see, that that uh, that little groove at the top, that chip, it disappears because we want as much advance as we can get as we're going up in the RPM range to make more power, get that fuel in sooner. So there you go, the ins and outs of elements. Um, we obviously do a lot of 7.7s now because that's our own new design. Um, it's important in business to be self-sufficient and also um, we can get hold of the 8.5s. Um, I would imagine you can still buy the 7.5s and the 8mm uh, diesel mechan elements. Whether he'll, uh, he'll be happy to sell them to me anymore, that's a different thing. But I'm pretty covered with the stuff that I've got. And we've got something very new uh, in the element department coming out soon, which you're going to be excited about. Bigger, badder, and just beautiful. See you guys. Hope this has been helpful.